God will raise up the age-old foundations. You will be called repairer of broken walls, restorer of streets with dwellings. Isaiah 58, 12, NIV. Welcome to Outreach Connection, focusing on topics and issues that reach our communities with the love and power of Jesus Christ. And welcome once again, my friends, to the Outreach Connection. I'm Dr. Pepper, shaking the salt. We've been talking about um, personalities, and our guest today says that I am bubbly and effervescent. <laughs> <laughs> With the Dr. Pepper's fizzing soda, I guess you could say that. You are going to love him again. He was on with me once before. This time, he's just on a stopover on his, no, that's not his. The book is a stopover on the way to hell. And we have a lot in common because we're both retired teachers, public schools, and that was our ministry and our missionary work. I often say today I'm still a missionary to the public schools teaching teachers. With me today, the author, R.E.P., Robert Ernest Price, Manny's Experiences in Hades, his stopover on the way to hell. Now, if that doesn't get your attention, I don't know what will. Thanks for being with me again. Appreciate it. Thank you. Well, I'll tell you, you know, just the very thought of this to have, wait a minute, a stopover. What? Hades? What's the difference between Hades and hell? Isn't that what a lot of people say immediately? I think a lot of people wonder that. Yeah. And I think there's a big difference between Hades and hell if we really search the scriptures. And tell us, because I know you the book, first of all, is based on scripture. You've added a lot of, like you said, the four allegories and the commentary, and that's in a you know, story in a, in a form that we can read. But it is scriptural all the way through. You take it strictly from the word, don't you? Well, the, the King James Version does not distinguish between Hades right. and Gehenna. Okay. And most others do. And so Gehenna is what we generally think of as the real eternal hell, mm -hmm. the Permanent. lake of fire and all that. But Hades, uh, if you look in Revelation chapter 20, mm -hmm. toward the end of it, where mm -hmm. the false prophet and the beast are cast into the lake of fire, and then Satan's cast into the lake of fire, and then at the great white throne of judgment, Everyone who's not found written in the book of life is cast into, and, and it says Hades, you mm -hmm. know, is cast into the lake of fire, which is the second death. And it says, this is from Revelation 20, 11 through 15, the, I guess this is about 15, in the NIV it says specifically, death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. Death and Hades. So. You're picturing not only the physical, but all of those who perhaps are within it. Right. Now, um, you know, a lot of people would say, well, wait a minute, isn't that like Catholics purgatory? Well, I point out in the book, don't confuse this with okay. Catholic purgatory. It's, it's not the same thing. And when we're speaking of purgatory, that's kind of like you can, I mean, I'm not Catholic and I never right. have been, but you, I do have things where people pray they send me a little card, a sacrament card that says, pray for my loved one. I mean, they're already dead, but pray that they will be. So how does that work? It doesn't. Well, they believe you, you know, through certain procedures, you can get your loved one out of purgatory sooner. Right. Or whatever, you But know. there's no scripture to go with that. I don't find any. And you have really researched it here, too. Under God's intention and preparation for mankind, the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness, but he is patient. And it said, he says, I would that none would perish. Right. And God thinks it. When you think of people who say, well, you know, it's already predestined. You're either going to heaven or you're going to hell, no matter what you do. That's not what he says. He said, I would that none would perish. He doesn't want anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Right. So if somebody's watching right now and they're saying, I don't understand all this heaven and hell stuff, and you're telling me to come to repentance, do you know what that means, to repent? What does that mean? Well, the general uh, definition is that you turn about, you know, yeah. and go the other way. So if you've been going against God, you turn around, acknowledge Him, and receive his grace and mercy in Christ and follow him. 
That's right. You and His what? mercy and goodness right. will follow us all the days of our life. And we get to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Yeah. I have run really fast from mercy and grace at times in my life. But they're faster than I am. And where He has led us, His provision, He will guide us. Right. The hand of God is not too short. Why did you write this? And who is Manny? Well, Manny's a fictitious character, yeah. just representing man in general. I like that and man need. <clears throat> and I thought that would be appropriate. I didn't want to use, you know, some relative's name right. or something like that. And uh, I guess I wrote the book mainly because so many people are talking about heaven, talking about hell, and then there's so much, I think, confusion about the difference between Hades and hell. Yeah. And I just sit down and did the best Studied I could. Studied the scripture. Did the best I could. I think the best God did through you. Because well, he brought, so. I mean, as you put all of this together, I know there's a new Bible out. My husband and I have been using it for our daily Bible study. And it's called, it's not the, it's all scripture, but it's done in chronological order. It's the chronological study. So that the things as they happen, you know, many of the, they even say that, um, you know, the whole book of Job is perhaps the oldest. Awesome. So it can't go before Genesis because Genesis is in the beginning. <laughs> so right. Anyway, different people have rearranged and formed this. But in layman's terms, what was it when people were asking you, what was it that prompted you to study the scripture to find out? Was there anything confusing you or a question? Uh, it's been a long number of years. Yeah. And uh, I just, as I would preach on heaven or hell or whatever, uh, I just wanted to be sure it was clear between mm -hmm. Hades and the eternal hell. Right. And, and Guiana. Nobody, I don't believe anybody's in hell yet. And you, a lot of times you hear that. Yes. You know, and, but it's coming. If you're in Hades, then you're bound for hell according to Revelation chapter 20. That's right. The great white throne judgment. So what do you do with the scripture that says it is appointed unto a man once to die and then the judgment? Well, what comes before that? I believe it is appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment. Uh, depends on whether we've already had our sins judged when we receive Christ as our Savior or whether we're going to have him judged at the great white throne. But the great white throne of judgment is uh, is only for the unsaved, as I see it. Okay, so but there's some that don't see it that way. Well, and there are there are little places where it could be, you know, this or that. But in general, the big story that everybody always uses, of course, was Jesus on the cross, the one thief on the right, the one on the left, the one on the right. Um, actually, he doesn't say a sinner's prayer. He doesn't. Right. But in his actions and in his heart, Jesus knew because he said. Today, you will be with me. Right. So paradise. that was his judgment. That is our judgment. We are saved. But how <laughs> then are we then judged? Well, we're not judged. But what happens to Christians as far as receiving a place or crowns? Well, for the Christian, as far as I know, of course, now I ain't dead yet. I haven't, <laughs> haven't died. Wait a minute. Let me take your pulse. <laughs> okay, you're alive. <laughs> okay. But... Paul said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, yes. and death is being absent from the body, yes. and so to be present with the Lord. But there's still a judgment for the Christian to come, a judgment, I, I call it the Bema Seat of Christ, mm -hmm. and the works will be tried, and they'll either be consumed or they'll be purified. And the consumed works does not mean we're going to hell. No. We're already, we've already received our salvation. Right. If you're watching right now and we're confusing you, we're not <laughs> trying to. If you have never, ever, ever trusted in Christ, that means trusted in the work that he did on the cross 2,000 years ago. All of our sins, past, present, and future, were annihilated, were put to death on the cross. Does that mean we won't sin anymore? Does that mean I won't say things or judge things? or No, but it does mean that if I am in Christ, in his righteousness, and I'm still alive on this earth, now what I do, the sanctification process is right. washing us up. 
So if you're talking to someone, maybe a baby Christian, who say this past weekend, they went to a church, they hadn't been in a long time, they walked down the aisle, they asked Christ to be at the center of their life, they admitted they'd been a sinner, and they believed that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, that God so loved the only, they're saved. Right. And when they get judged later, what you're talking about is, if they died right then and there, they wouldn't have many works to their name. No. But they're in heaven. But God knows their past and knows their heart. Yes. And so I leave some things up to God. Good. I think we should. <laughs> And, uh, but this isn't what this is about. We just didn't want to scare the Christians into thinking, you're saying that I could die even though I've accepted Christ and be in this place where I'm going to be judged? No, that's not no. what you're saying at all. Okay, so let's back it up here. One of the um, surveys of some men of God. Were you planning to come to Hades on your way to hell when you died? <laughs> I love this. Because um, these were things that you, of course, kind of... I made them up. Elaborated on, okay. Which a lot of uh, news is made up anyway. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> but not the good news. The right. good news is true. But the reason that I found this so interesting was that most of the people you and I know as school teachers, kids in high school have no clue, especially if they haven't ever been raised in a church, as to what a scripture means, where a book in the Bible is, you know, what hell really means. And they look at us as Christians often saying, well, they're just hypocrites. There's so many contradictions in the Bible, but they haven't read it. Mm -hmm. So we have to get kids into the word to even begin to understand this, don't you think? Yeah, if they don't, if they don't take the word, the Bible as the word of God, right. they're, they're not standing on much truth or solid ground. And they're making it up just like you did with Manny, but they're saying, well, God wouldn't punish me because God's a God of love. He's not a God of judgment. Eh, wrong. Uh, God is God, period. God is God. And he makes his own rules. That's right. One of my favorite verses, and one I really like, is where it says that God did everything after the counsel of his own will. Oh. I think it's in Ephesians chapter uh -huh. 1. But... <clears throat> He didn't ask a committee, and he didn't ask me, and he didn't ask you or nobody else after the counsel of his own will. That's good. And so how do we know God's will? This is what kids say. Well, how do I know what God's will is? Well, we read the scripture. That's it. It's all a big circle that leads back to God's word. Right. In the beginning was the word. When we get to the place in here where we're questioning even some of this ourselves, that did you believe in the bodily resurrection? You know, people say, what bodily resurrection? Well, I think there's a lot of liberal preachers, according to surveys that have been done, you know, that show uh, a lack of real belief in the essentials of the scripture. And this is where we can't stand with other faiths. And let's be clear about this, folks, because we kind of talked about this a little bit before we went on air. <clears throat> if you have a knock at your door and it's Jehovah's Witnesses, we love our friends that are in the Jehovah's Witnesses, but we have to stand at odds against some of the beliefs. Mormons, I know we have, you know, the presidential campaigns coming up. Um, there are other certain things that we would label as cults. But when you say the essentials, what makes it essential that I don't care if you're Baptist or I don't care if you're Methodist, I don't care if you're Pentecostal, but you have to have certain truths. And what are they? most basic truth is that Christ is the righteousness of God. He has been set forth as the one to bear our sins. He died and rose again and the resurrection shows that he was the son of God mm -hmm. and uh, we believe all those things and we better believe the rest of it. He's coming again. Mm -hmm. He's coming to receive his bride. Mm -hmm. I like that term. I love that because we are his bride we of church. We are the part of the bride of Christ. Mm -hmm. And that's what he's coming for. Then can I add something else and say, but we have another book that's a, just a supplement to the Bible. We believe all of that, but we also believe that. Well, <laughs> people are free to believe what they want to believe, but uh, it better be the truth. And it better be lined up with right. God's word. And the truth, I, I, I accept the truth that is God's word 
whether I understand it all or not. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what I base my truth on. I, I always tell people, and I've never pastored big churches, but I've always told people in the church, build your faith on the truth of the Bible, not on other people's experiences mm -hmm. or what they say or whatever. That's good. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. I studied the Eastern religions in college. I wanted to find out the truth. You know, there was a lot with the Beatles going, you know, into right. all of these things. And so we looked into that. We hear a lot of Kabbalah today with Madonna going into this Jewish segment that is weird. And there's just so much that can distract us because we're looking, we're searching, we're hungry. And if you want the meat, my friends, if you have not read God's Word and you say, well, there's thousands of pages, I couldn't read that, where would you tell them to start? New Testament or Old? I would, uh, I would start with the New Testament, personally. And where would you start in the New Testament? Well, when I was in the service and got my first Bible, mm. that I didn't know the difference between the New and the Old Testament, yeah. I started with Matthew, but that gets a little hard to figure out the plot. It's, it is, because it's the life and the following of Christ. You no, know, it's so be, who begat so and so, who begat yeah. so. Uh, personally, I like the book of Romans mm. and the book of Ephesians. That's good. I love this first chapter of Romans, that, since you said the book of Romans, because I had a niece this weekend, 16 years old, that said, but my friends are, um, are Jewish, and some of my friends are atheists, and some of my friends are just, you know, seeking, and she said, does that mean they're all going to hell? And in Romans 1.20, we just had looked at this not too long ago, since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, it says in the King James, are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. If you're in a remote part of Antarctica, if you're in a remote part of India or Africa, if you were before Christ, you still know through creation that there is a creator. That's all you're accountable for if that's all you know. But when we have heard that Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, a nadi be en el Padre sino por mí, no one comes to the Father but through me, now we have a choice. Mm -hmm. His way or our way. And Romans chapter 1, I believe it is, where it says the righteousness of God yes. is manifested. That's right. And in chapter 3, the latter part of chapter 3 tells us about that righteousness mm -hmm. and that we got to have it. And the Apostle Paul, at the later in his life, you know, he recounted how he was born a Jew and how he was zealous for God and everything yes. and had kept the commandments probably as well as anybody ever did. But he said, I count all this as rubbish. Don't. For one thing, <laughs> for one thing, that I may be found in Christ having his righteousness mm. and not my own. I love that. And that's the only ground that I'm going to stand on when I leave this world. I love it. It's to be in the righteousness mm. that's imputed to me, not mm. my righteousness, but the righteousness of God himself. Absolutely. As Christ is. And there's no other way. Right. They said, Lord, teach us the way. And he said, I am the way. Right. Oof. If you've never trusted in him the way, he is the way, the truth, and the life, this is your opportunity, friends. I don't care where you are, what you're doing. Just take a minute right now and just admit before God that you can't be righteous. I couldn't. I was, I was filthy. Maybe you've lived a good life like Paul did. Maybe you thought that you were holy according to whatever your religion or faith. But if you admit that you need something more and you can believe that God so loved the world, he gave his only son, and that he said, whosoever believeth. If you could say, Lord, help my unbelief, but I'm stepping out in faith that you sent your only begotten son. And then he says, just confess it, say it, tell God I want you to be Lord of my life. Oh, I was 23, you were how old? About 20. About 20. Not quite 21. And you didn't come from a Christian family? No. Tell us a little bit about how you got into the service. Well, I quit high school, and that was right after the Korean War started. The principal said, you know, if you drop out of school, the Army will get you, and 
<laughs> fooled him. I joined the Air Force. You joined the Air Force. But, uh, you know, it was a good experience. Yes. And by the way, thank you for serving since we've just come past uh, the 4th of July. I know you didn't see I didn't it that serve way. so well. I well? Was, uh, I was a goof off. <laughs> But I served. I had to, I had a number. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, then after the service, you got out and what? Well, then uh, I came back to Illinois and mm -hmm. went to Western Illinois. Got a degree in education. Yes. And started teaching sixth grade at Highland Riverside, which is past history now, where the <clears throat> Lighthouse Baptist Church is now. That's right. I'd forgotten that. And. Uh, taught there 20 years and then I kind of got an itch to move on and ended up in 1980 moving to Alabama I taught 18 more years in private schools mm -hmm. and pastored little churches and we're in Alabama I had forgotten I know I asked you well it's close to Dothan Alabama Dothan Alabama and you have let's see now how many grandchildren as of this writing I know you have six great-grandchildren or more by now no I got 11 11 <laughs> <laughs> this hasn't been that long, has it? Uh, and how many, how many 20, grandchildren? Twenty grandkids. Twenty grandchildren and eleven great grandchildren. And what about at home in your area? Any, any that live close? I have a granddaughter in Quint er, in Hannibal. Okay, and your wife? And, and she has two children. And my daughter, one of my daughters, we have six children. One of my daughters lives here in Quincy. In Quincy, so right. they're close, yeah. And. Her husband is a bivocational pastor at Quincy Baptist Church. So you all kind of... 15th and Lind. And uh, there's an empty pew if anybody wants to come. Let's give a little <laughs> plug. Let's do it again. Quincy Baptist at 15th and... Lind. Lind. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, so... Yeah. Tell us about your wife. My wife is uh, doing much better. She Good. had a little open heart surgery. I knew she was having surgery. This year... January and had a little difficulty getting recuperated, but she's doing much better. Good. Thank the Lord for that. And there's again where the power of prayer comes in. And when we say he's our Rafa healer, he's our Rafa healer. This, the reason that this is important, and I believe this can be a salvation tool. I'm sure you've already seen it doing that. I hope so. How could folks get a copy? Well, they can call me. Uh, I think it's on the screen or going to be, and it's... Uh, my phone number or the address, okay. either one. Uh, it's not in the bookstore. It's uh, self-published. Mm -hmm. I tell you, it's not easy to get books published these days unless well, you've got a big church or yeah, or if you have an in with somebody rather unique. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but they can also find it at BrentwoodBooks.com or not anymore. No, they okay. So they should call you, and we're given, as we said, right. the number and the information up there, and. I asked you about the four allegories because Manny's experience in, in Hades, here's what it says, sets forth a fictional but entirely reasonable account of what could be the experience of many who die without Christ as their Savior. But it clarifies, and you're quick to point this out too, that the relation of Hades to the eventual hell, it's different. And Hades is not for the Christian. There's no purgatory right. where you wait to see if you made it or not. It's right. not like you're waiting for your name on a cast list or a roster. It's simply that, as you say, there, there will be the time when Satan himself will be bound in the eternal fire. Right. Well, the scripture says, Yes. Jesus said, you know, that hell was prepared for the devil and his angels. Yes. And he's talking about the lake of fire. That's right. And... Uh, in contrast to that, what God prepared for us as human beings was not the lake of fire, but God prepared for us a body in the womb of Mary. Mm. And it's that body that went to the cross yes. and bore our sins and shed the only blood that can take away sin. And that's found in Hebrews. Yes. If you want to talk about it, call me. <laughs> yeah, and we could talk a lot about that because, again, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Right. I don't understand it all. As a human being, I cannot understand how the divine, how the great creator of all of this universe could come to live within me through the power of his Holy Spirit. You know, I just have to trust that I, I understand it enough to believe because I've seen... God's confirmation. I've seen his 
righteousness. We are fortunate. God doesn't say you have to understand this, yes. but he does say you have to believe it. That's right. You've got to trust me. I don't have to understand how electricity works when I flip the light on, but boy, when the light comes, hallelujah. <laughs> well, you can get a little experience of that if you stick your hairpin in the wall socket, you know. <laughs> <laughs> You're bad. You're you bad. You've got that, that underlying humor that's going <laughs> to get in there. And, uh, uh. I love that, too, because that shows God has a sense of humor, but when it comes to this, folks, he is clear. I urge you to get a copy of this because Hades, the stopover on the way to hell with Christians, we'll get that one great white throne judgment where we are, will be given certain crowns. God will probably take away a few of mine because of my big mouth. But <laughs> well, some of our uh, works are going to be consumed right. by fire and uh, what we lose those rewards we lose will be lost for eternity for eternity that's and right. the ones that are purified are purified for eternity my scariest scripture is but God I cast out demons in your name but I did all of these good works and even in his name and he said get behind <laughs> me I never knew you right. he says I never knew you you can serve in a soup kitchen, you can give to the poor, you can feed, you can give all of your money, you can store it up in your barns. But as you said, it is all filth. It is dung. It is nothing. This is kind of a scary book. It's fun. I mean, it's good reading and it's scriptural. And it's a little sarcasm. It's a little, I'd say a lot of sarcasm. Oh. <laughs> but it's the kind that you just can't stop reading. How did you ever, ever, ever say, I'm going to sit down and write this? Or did you not? Did you start it out as a... No, I just started out okay. uh, talking about a funeral and, you know, yeah. I've preached a few funerals. Yes, I have. know what goes on and trying to be frank and honest about it. Yeah. And Don't say your loved ones are in a better place. Right. Uh, we, can't, we can't declare... But I know at a funeral we want to say, you know, well, I know she's in a better place or he's in a better place. But that's all between that person and God. That's right. And Only uh, God knows. I'm sure, you know, there's going to be a lot of people kind mm -hmm. of fooled, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. The best thing we can say, I think, is if they were here right now, they would want you to know the truth that Jesus is the way. Right. Open the truth. Because you can have a salvation message at funerals, and I'm sure you've preached some of those too. And right. that's not bad, is it? No. Yeah. Uh, it's better than reading poetry to me. I'm, yes. I'm just not much on, you know. The essence of the universe, all bound within his soul that is sprinkled like a butterfly. Eh. <laughs> you are so fun. I love you. Will you come back on with your next book with me? I haven't been motivated to write anymore. All right, here's your well, motivation. I have written, you know, another one, Toby's Trials. That's just about a puppy dog. We're out of time. <laughs> I just saw that. But you know what? You're right. And I'm Dr. Pepper, shaking the salt. You've been watching Outreach Connection. If you would like to contact this ministry, you may write Outreach Connection, care of CTN, WTJR, 222 North 6th Street, Quincy, Illinois.